Cantalo Avenue House is located in the southern Gold Coast suburb of Miami. Our city sits in the subtropics. On the northeastern edge of the caldera of the long extinct Wollumbin Shield volcano. This volcano is a defining piece of geology for the region that has shaped our city's landscape and our history. The volcano's rich soils provide fertile ground for the World Heritage Rainforest and farmlands to the west, whilst the eroded geographical striations of the caldera punctuate the coastline, historically providing rich hunting and gathering grounds for the local common buried peoples. These patterns of occupation still remain today. The headlands form the basis for the city's renowned surf breaks and resulting surf and skate culture, whilst the water, sand and natural landscape remain significant places for public gathering and leisure activities such as fishing, cycling, swimming, surfing and running. The landscape and climate has really defined our culture and continues to underpin our experience of the city. Life is lived outdoors and we all enjoy it. It may come as a surprise to some, but the city really does have a rich architectural legacy that reflects its climate and its culture. Modest buildings with small internal footprints and large, loosely organised external spaces. We're interested in these buildings as a practice. Though fast disappearing, they do demonstrate a consistent set of patterns that is particular to this place whether that be concealing the car from the street, low front and side fences, prioritising landscape to the street front, entering sometimes not via a front door, but via a sequence of outdoor spaces, and the use of lightweight timber and brickwork construction materials and detailing, and even living spaces that engage meaningfully with the street. Cantala Avenue is an unremarkable street it falls away to the west and is comprised of various low-scale detached and attached dwellings. There is a combination of solid fences and carports, but also grass front yards and low fences. It is a slow street and it's great for kids to play in. The existing house was not remarkable, nor was it of any significant heritage value. It was built in the 1970s and had poor drainage and privacy to the rear of the site and really lacked any engagement with the outdoors or the climate. It did, however, have good structural bones. It prioritised the landscape to the street and was quite modest in its scale and its form. It does have memory to people and it does have collective memory to people and significance to people, whether it be in the neighbourhood or to our client or to previous owners who lived here. And I think it's the collective memory of a place which is significant and should be built on. And I mean, there's also the other argument around why do we need to keep demolishing? There's so much embodied energy in these buildings and we're completely just raising them to build anew and generally they're, they're less efficient than what they previously were. So there's, there's huge sustainability values in adapting and renewing our existing built stock. The design process for this project relied heavily on the formation of the outdoor spaces, in particular the entry sequence and the outdoor room and then the connection out through to the backyard. Uh, almost if not more time was spent ensuring that was working before the configuration of the internal spaces. And I think that's a reoccurring theme in our work is the significance proportion to the outdoor spaces and how they are an integral part of the architecture and experience of the house. initial kind of move was to remove those ad hoc elements and then the next sort of move was to start to carve away at the floor plan even further so the insertion of the north facing outdoor room and to sort of pair things back to I suppose a line in the sand at which we, we could then add the new two. The new extension to the northeast was primarily for privacy given the house sits in the natural gully there are a number of existing neighbours that were looking down into the yard and there was next to no privacy in, 
in the yard and that sort of first move of extending to that edge was to provide privacy from those neighbours. The continuation of that wall wrapping around the, the north and the western side formalises that, that garden room in many ways around the edge of the pool and reconnecting with the existing house on, on the western side. It's really pretty incredible how once those edges were formed, how the sky came into presence, the, the kind of the intensity of the blue that we get in, in our sky here. The courtyards were really critical in moderating the intensity of light here, as with the carved north-facing outdoor room, it's deep into the plan, so it has three walls around it, so that the light is a lot, it's, it's moderated more, and there's depth to that light as well. Whether it be light from above, light from the side, or it's washed light, um, it's, it's a really fundamental kind of think, aspect of living in these conditions. The other key street insertion was the realignment of the entry sequence into the house. So we proposed and, and created a, a, a brick seat that wrapped its way around the existing Poinciana and then folded into a, a small little entry wall that designated the, the entry to the house and a new brick pathway and new landscaping. So this is in many ways a gift to, gift to the neighbourhood, a little mini urban landscape that again the, the neighbourhood tend to congregate around and uh, all the kids tend to end up in the, in the front yard of the house playing, all the, playing with all their toys and the footy and it becomes a bit of a, bit of a toy graveyard out the front there but it's a, it's a really lovely thing to see that kind of life happening on our streets and happening in our front yards with walls and solid car ports, none of that can occur. And I think given the circumstances that we're, we're currently in where our interactions have become so much more localised and that social interaction has become such a critical thing and our neighbourhoods and our neighbours have become a critical part of engaging with people again. And this house facilitates that, which is wonderful. I improved my connection with the streetscape and with my kids and their playing and I didn't have to be worried about them on the street where I couldn't see them, which is great and and I can hear them and yeah, it feels safe and it feels like a like 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 a street should. Cantala Avenue House celebrates the city's past, but it also demonstrates how a built fabric can authentically represent the culture and way of life in our city in a, in a really contemporary manner.